the trip. Ok, là c'est là que la, que la go gros est vraiment. Alright gang, so we're uh we're done with uh, little Minsk, if I'm not wrong. Super duper small lake in between two portages. And now we're uh, we're on the edge to start the second one. A little bit bigger, I believe this one is around 630 meters. And then we'll have a big boy that's 935. And then a 1400 one. And to finish the day, a 1700 one. But for now, let's just enjoy this uh, this little rapid. Look at it, it's gorgeous. And we're trolling. It's supposed to be a ton of, uh, of trout around here. So lake trout, obviously. So we're, we're trolling. We're on, uh, on a little lake. Forgot the name of it. What's the name of it? What's mink. that? Mink? Mink. Mink. Yeah, we want a little mink. Now we're on mink. It's about a 5K, a little 5K lake. We're like, might as well see who can get some fish, All right? Game on. Right now, the score is pretty equal. Everyone sucks, big zero, but I'm confident, you know. I'm the worst fisherman. <laughs> what you got, Marty? What's your uh, what's your bait? Uh, it's, uh, it's a spoon. It's a spoon, just like me. I went with the red devil. I was like, ah, this thing works with everything basically. But again, maybe you shouldn't take advice from me since I'm like the worst fisherman ever. But it's early in the season, so they should be hungry. We should be lucky. Water's pretty, pretty darn cold. So trout shouldn't be too, too deep right now. Maybe we'll get some bass. We'll see, we'll see. It's just such a beautiful day. We really got lucky. Mosquitoes aren't too bad. It just feels good to be out there, you know. Okay. First trip of the season, guys. Freaking COVID, eh? Perfect, perfect gift for me. Oh, I got the bugger. <laughs> All right. I think we might be going a bit too fast for trolling though. Gotta give a chance to, to the fish to catch up, you know? Gotta look weak.
little change of plan. Well, not really a change of plan, but an executive decision was made by the team. So we decided that we were not gonna be fishing on Minx Lake. We're gonna we're gonna go through it, give a good paddle, make some dis make some distance, and then uh, and then later on we'll fish as soon as we get near to our to our campsite and be be more worth it because honestly I don't want a portage with a fish I want to eat the fish so, uh, that's my point of view I think Mark would be willing to just fish all day and sleep wherever which is kind of cool too <laughs> Listen, that's the only thing we have to do is paddle <laughs> but I want to eat a fish. Yeah, I agree with that. I can, I can agree with that. But all in all, we'll be paddling all freaking day because it's our biggest day on the water. It's also our biggest day portaging wise, I believe. Wait. It's just nice. It just feels good. You know when, when you like. When it starts to hurt a little, and you know, like, okay, I'm grinding on now. It feels good. It just feels good. First paddle of the season, so muscles aren't all waking up yet. Also, since the park just opened, I thought it would be like full of people just just like us like taking taking advantage of the opportunity since we're all stuck at home for the past like three months but no we got the freaking park all for ourselves that's also pretty cool We were a little unlucky on our last portage. I freaking slipped on a rock. Woo! I slipped on a rock and yeah, dropped the canoe on my neck and dropped my knee, my left knee on a rock. So we're gonna fix that up later, but yeah, not too great. And later on, <laughs> Marty did something similar, but really like took took the weight of the canoe in front on his neck. So we gotta make sure that we're, we're taking care of our injuries when we get to camp, stretching a lot, doing some yoga in the woods, but honestly we need to, to make sure it's not gonna be an issue for the rest of the trip. Tough on the buddy, sir. <laughs> it's not tough on the gear this time. Well. It's tough on the buddy. <laughs> Yeah, water break. It's a good call, Martin. I like this guy. Catadime. Be free. Just scoop some water and there you go. <laughs> oh, half the crop one out of the picture. Mm. Why? <laughs> so these guys, those tiny guys over here that I can pinch with my two fingers. I'm tickling them right now. There's three of them on the boat. The best one is Rusty. Then you got Mark at the end. You know, just, just a little dude, a little guy there. Not too bulky, not too muscly, you know, he's just a small little dude at the back there. And then Dave up front, just trying to fish like me. 
Okay. I'll introduce you guys when we get at camp. <sighs> What is this nice little cabin? No rangers. Uh, rangers cabin, you think? No, I think that's what it says on the map. Huh? Actually, an old a... rangers cabin. I have a map right here. What does it a, say? There's a black dot, though. Okay. That says that there's a building. That's for sure the building. That's for sure the building, guys. Okay, that portage was absolutely insane. Bug wise, I think I swallowed like a pound of mosquitoes. Faux show. That was, a, that was a, a good one. About, we got two numbers on it. The official park number is 900, uh, 935 meters, but Jeff Map says it's about 1100 meters. Nonetheless, we freaking rocked this thing. How long? Let me look at the watch that's under my bug shirt. Woo. So, uh, we, we've done it in 24 minutes. Single carry, about 90, 85 pounds on our back. A K in 25 minutes. That's pretty good. That's yeah, with pretty the good. Time, it, it significantly was climbing at first too. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So we're gonna we're now on uh, Club Lake, and uh, yeah, now on Club Lake, and uh, we're gonna get out of the swamp, and. Uh, Our boys just catch it. The boys are right there. <laughs> they, were, they were just behind us, man. Yeah, so we're on Club Lake. We got another big portage to do after that, and then we'll decide if we sleep on the on the on the next lake or if we're freaking doing another crazy 700 1700, 1700 meter portage, and then we'll be at our goal, which is Tundra Lake. We'll see, that one uh, was a little reality check with the bugs and uh, the steep terrain. That was a big one. All right, all right, but still feeling good. You feeling good, Marty? Yes, yes. There you go, the spirit's Food there. Was great, just before, yeah. the, just before the portage, that was a good call. Right, right, I ate on the lake. I was like on, on the beach, like Marty just doing all the, all the steering and powering in the back. As usual, because I'm a sucker. <laughs> All right, thanks, Marty. You're awesome, bro. You're awesome. It is awesome. It's a nice little maze.
Hi, Rusty. Hi, Rusty. The bugs are insane. We got the fire on. We got the bug shelter on. We're gonna chill in the bug bug shelter, I'm pretty sure, because the black flies are absolutely freaking insane. To not say the least. And uh, sadly, Marty lost uh, his electronic bag. So he went back. <laughs> <laughs> the man went back with Dave and redid all the portages that we've done today. Hopefully, like, to find the bag at one spot where we had dinner, well, lunch, actually, but no luck. So we're thinking it may be at the first campsite, so we're going to go back. We're doing a loop, so in three days, we're going to go back to that camp, and hopefully it's still going to be there. Otherwise, it really sucks for Marty. But yeah, yeah. And tomorrow is gonna be insane too. We did about 2.7 Ks of portage and tomorrow we're doing around 4, 4.5. So good, good, good night of rest is gonna be needed big time. And uh, we're getting old so warm up too. <laughs> We're gonna do a little warm up this time. All right, so see you when it's uh, dinner time in not too long. Oh my God, guys, what a day, what a day. We did something really great, something we're really good at. We overshoot our goal again. Um, so we're supposed to have fun. That's the main goal of a trip. And we decided to keep that motto on and uh so tomorrow we're, we're gonna do an extra about 4k of portage of portages and instead of today instead of adding that to today and i think it's a great great idea uh, every man started to feel the, the 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 weight of all of those portages that we did today we did about it's kind of weird because it wasn't a big such a big day even though it was like we did half the distance of the entire trip in one day basically so that's pretty big in a way it's not the most portages we've we've done in our life in a day but those one were were tough those one were tough the last one in particular was really tough the, the trail was not like the, the trail the trail was not uh properly kept clean just because the rangers had didn't get a chance to, to get to this section of the park yet so it was it, it was quite tough and then unfortunately mark one of the one of the boys lost one of lost his uh, electronic bag with like you know all the stuff that that can be really helpful helpful like you know your headline for say so he's a trooper him and dave decided to backtrack to redo all all the lakes we've done, to redo like two portages in in the worst environment possible. I believe right now that all the black flies in the entire northern continent are in this section of the Algonquin Park. <laughs> and Mark Mark was not ready for it. He didn't dress properly for it. But he 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 ran with with all what he, all he had you know like he just went through did not crack under the pressure of the black flies wearing a black shirt a black t-shirt and a bathing suit basically but yeah lesson learned i'm le i'm learning from his mistakes <laughs> i can tell you that tomorrow before we leave i will triple check to make sure i got my battery bank and my headlamp because it's going to be tough and he's it's going to be tough but it's entertaining in a way. So, Mar Mart number two and I stayed at camp, just to enjoy time together and 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 chat, stretch. And you know what? I learned something. You guys should start doing this too. Like I'm getting old, even though like 
I'm over 30s now, and, and I'm like, man, I need to stretch now. I need to do, like, a 20-minute stretch session after, like, all of this. And I believe tomorrow morning I'll warm up. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it big time. Big, big time. And tomorrow is going to be even harder. We're basically backpacking with a canoe on our head and, and like, 50 pounds on our back. So... Yeah, I think I think warming up and stretching is not such a bad idea and and having a a swag of something like rum or wine is not too bad too. I think it's going to help at the end. But overall, really nice weather. We we discovered some very nice section of the lake too cuz we don't know how to read a map properly, I guess. <laughs> we're three men with three maps and we managed to not, to not take the right turn <laughs> but we discovered a nice section of the lake a really nice one so so i'm kind of glad we did that too and uh and the score on fishing is still zero zero for everyone but i guess tomorrow that's going to change because after the portage, after we set up camp, and, and that's not going to take too much time in our, in our day. I believe like like at 1 o'clock we should be at camp. We're going to start fishing for real. Fish needs to happen. Because my my name is, is not great right now. Like, people know I'm not a great fisherman. This needs to change. <laughs> this really needs to change. <laughs> So we're going to give it a shot. We should, like, everything should be in our favor. But the one thing, though, tomorrow is supposed to be the, the, uh, a rainy day. Like, a, like maybe there's going to be a storm. Maybe there's going to be a bit tough thunder, a shower. Like, we'll see. We'll see because it was supposed to rain tonight, and it's not too bad. We, we, we got kind of lucky with this, but tomorrow is supposed to be a rainy day. So we'll see what's going to happen there. But it's not it's not a real camping trip if there's no rain at some point. Like, this needs to be part of it, right? Otherwise, you can't hand, you can't really enjoy the sunny days if you don't have rainy ones. So, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my my cup of wine, have a little chat with the the boys left, which is Marty, which is I don't know if you can see it. Can you see this guy? Basically, oh, almost, almost, almost. Uh, the other guys are sleeping while well, trying to sleep, but I'm keeping them up right now, talking. I can do this for a long time, guys. <laughs> but yeah, and I'll uh, and I'll see you tomorrow with br for breakfast. What do I have for breakfast? Oh yeah, man. I'm 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 gonna show you, but only tomorrow morning. All right, guys. See ya. Good morning, guys. I'm the first up. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. We got lucky. No rain, no rain so far. That's pretty great. Just made myself some coffee. Cheers. Enjoy the, the sunrise. It's about seven o'clock now. Yeah. Yeah. So 
I'll make myself a breakfast, oatmeal and peanut butter and pitas. Empty rouled bur de peanut. <laughs> Hope you can hear the life around. Birds are insane right now. You got a lot to say, I guess. Anyway, I'll take this moment for me. So, doing the first one, 1700 meters, using the one and a half technique, which is pretty simple. Me and Dave are gonna walk the entire portage, drop our bag there. During that time, Mart and Mart will walk with their bags and drop it halfway. So, and then they're gonna turn back and grab the canoes and do the entire way with the canoes alone. During the, that time, Dave and I will walk back to the middle of the portage, grab their bag, their bags, and go to the end. That way, everyone only walk after the portage with that weight, which means nothing. So we're gonna go faster since we're using less weight. On a, since we are walking with less weight, we're going faster a little bit, and it's less uh, demanding I'm gonna let you go first, buddy. Yeah. Plus, we've got Rusty walking in with the coffee and his food. Great dog, love it. You too. Oh, you too. You too. You gotta, you gotta understand. There's only one way this works. If you have a canoe and one bag per guy, you have three equipment. Whoa. And me and Lash, well, we have four pieces of equipment, so we have three bags in a canoe. So that means that I am hauling 100 pounds for the whole run. So I'm just gonna send it. <laughs> it's more like 35, guys. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a lot. It's definitely a lot. And that portage, damn it. It's not a highway. Going uphill, you know, like, it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> but, Honestly, feels much better than hauling the canoe at the same time. For me, anyway. Of course. So, trying to uh, one and a half technique there. Let's see. We left at 10:45. It's how long it took us to do 1,700 meters. All right. All right. All right. All right. So. It took us about 30 minutes to do this one, which is not bad. There's a shitload of bugs. Like shitload. It's bad, it's bad. So now we're gonna go back and grab uh, the pack of uh, Martin Mart. And yeah, that's the technique, so let's do this. little one about 200 meters in a swamp 
<laughs> and going up freaking hill, but that's the beauty of it. Let's do this. It's a pretty technical one, guys. A lot of narrow pathway, a lot of rocks and roots in the way. A massive boulder too. <laughs> I'm gonna show it to you in a couple of seconds. A massive boulder that was brought by the gla glacier icebergs a long time ago. But it's pretty massive, pretty cool. Wondering what kind of V it would be. Is it like a V5, V6, V7? I don't know. Rock climbing people out there tell me in the comment section. Here you go. I'll show you the boulder. Pretty cool, eh? So anyway, that's a short one, it's 200 meters, so we did not single carry it, obviously. We're saving our strength for the next one. Next portage is gonna be 1400 meters. The good news is we just did the biggest one a couple of meters, a couple of, like an hour ago. Time flies. So that's, uh, that's great news. Got a massive cramp in my, my uh, right calf. That means I'm dehydrated. I need to drink more water. I usually drink a liter of water on every lake. Didn't get a chance to do it this time just because the lakes were so small in between the portages. But yeah, on the next one, for sure. Having a, having a, a big, whoa, having a big cup of water. All right. Frosty the big guy. So happy to be in the woods carrying his food and our coffee. This is the best dog. Aren't you the best dog? Yes, you're the best dog. All right, guys, we're at the last long portage. It's going to be 1496. We're on Tundra, Tundra Lake and we're going on Erable. That's a big one, 1400 actually, more like 1500. We're gonna use the same technique, one and a half carry. So the bag first, then drop the stuff at midway. Team B goes back, get the canoes, while team A goes to the end and come back and grab the bags that are left in the middle of the portage. Let's do this. Put it on the raincoat just because there might be a thunderstorm or a storm of any kind coming down real soon. Real, real soon, as you can see. You can smell it in the air. All right, let's do this. This is what you do at the end of a portage. <laughs> Can't believe it's actually working. But it's gonna destroy the thing. There's a road, people! We clearly got lost. There's a road and a freaking bridge. What is this place? You thought you were far from civilization, did ya? <laughs> no, we won't. We weren't. This is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was the last portage of the day, 170 meters. Marty was just like, screw this. He just, oh my God. Well, I'm gonna show you a different technique, I guess, to do a portage. Not sure it's the best one for the canoe, but it did work. 
What the heck? I think we're just really tired at this point. But this, this portage is like a highway. It's almost paved. That feels good too. After that, we're gonna, we're gonna be on the Lake Érable. We're gonna find a nice little island, make our shelter, and uh, maybe we're gonna go for f fishing. Maybe we're just gonna relax at this point. We're pretty, pretty tired, everyone. That was a big day. Oh, let me show you this. It's pretty neat. A little fall right there. It's pretty cute. Look at this. So this is the proper way to do it. I'm just saying. It's an option. You do, I'm not telling you what to do. You do you. Hey guys, it's supper time. Having this pad thai. As you can hear, jets are going. We're boiling water right now. It's a really nice little island that we found. Every, every, every man got set up. Two tent, my hammock. The bug shelter too, that saved our life last night. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be useful tonight too. We got lucky. I think we dodged the, the storm big time big big time oh my god that's the peanut butter that they put in this <laughs> i got some craft peanut butter all right that's funny anyway so water's boiling that was a big day a good day toughest portage i've done in a long long time but it feels good it feels good anyway we're gonna make a fire chill by the fire while there's no bugs and I'll see you tonight suck at fishing guys I really need to up my game it's just not that easy my glasses are terrible right now eh? let's fix that done it's fixed <sighs> guys I suck at fishing I really need to fix this. And I really need to up my game. It's terrible. I really do suck at fishing. Fuck. Language. Chocolat. It's a beautiful island. It's one of the most beautiful camping sites I've ever seen on Algonquin. We are on Maple Lake. I'm so glad we're doing a zero. Like we're staying here for two nights because it's just that great. Just is. So everyone, uh, we divide, divide and conquer. Every guy has a has a side of the island and is fishing. Hopefully, shore fishing is going to be good. For one of them, I won't fish tonight. But yeah, otherwise I think we're gonna have to go back into canoes and, and figure out a great spot because there is fish in this lake, big time, big time. It is known for it, so we could just gotta up our game, you know? 
Plus, I should present every one, every dude around here to a. Should do that. Shouldn't be rude. Should introduce my partners for this trip, right? Marty, Mark, and Dave, and the best one, Rusty. But I think you know who's Rusty. <laughs> Guys are fishing right there. Mark. I didn't get anything, but but Dave did. Got a little crappy there, so a little snack. But seriously, guys, look at this. This is why my channel is called Outdoor Therapy. This is the most relaxed you can get. It's amazing. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gent. So this is day three. We are on uh, Maple Lake. It was a cold night. I can. It was a really cold night. The last two nights I didn't even zip my sleeping bag, but this one I was. I was a cold one. I wish I had put my long johns on. I ain't gonna do this mistake tonight. Mosquitoes are and black flies are are taking a nap because it's so cold. So that that's that feels good, and I think it's going to be the temperature for the rest of the day. That that's great too. So next step, it's going to be to to start a fire. I think Mart well, Marty's on it, but I want to do a feather stick. Try to use the try to own the skills with the fire rod and and see what we can do there, and then have a a good breakfast and coffee coffee's gonna be so good coffee is gonna feel so great so so let's do this hope you're having a coffee with me on this one guys you deserve it too look at that beauty seriously look at that lake it's awesome it's just awesome Where did you learn the cedar tea? Um, well, the first place I, I guess, did cedar tea was uh, right here in Algonquin Park. Num How come? A number of years ago when I used to work as a, a guide at Voyager Quest. And uh, this was part of my little rest day afternoon routine, just a little bit of cedar tea to calm the spirits. So this is the day four, basically, our zero on Maple Lake. Really relaxed. That's why there's not a lot of footage. We went fishing this morning for a couple of hours and and just got unlucky. We could see a ton of fish. We could see a ton of it, but it was just not. They, they were just not going for it. And then Dave and Mark went in the afternoon around uh, five o'clock and again they went for an hour or two no fish it's a tough lake it's a tough lake but there's supposed to be a ton of trout so we didn't say it. we didn't say our last word on that but hey that's what's that's what's what hey marty uh, marty and i just enjoyed a fire basically and 
and I had a good chat. We haven't seen each other in a little while, so that was good. A good catch up. Hey. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna we enjoyed a couple of teas. Cedar tea, blueberry tea that we made because there there was some blueberries on the island, so that's it was pretty good. And now, uh, yeah, now I think we're just gonna enjoy the sunset. It's gonna show show up in a couple of hours and uh, stargaze tonight. That's gonna be really nice. That's gonna yeah, it feels good, guys. It feels so good, so good for the mind and the body. That zero was was much needed. Tomorrow's gonna be a big day too. We got like five hours of traveling to do before we get to the end point, so. A lot of little portages, 400, 600, 700, and so on. No big 1,700 meters portage. <laughs> I'm glad that's, that's behind us, that's good. But it was, it was so worth it. Honestly, I think it's the most beautiful campsite I've seen in Algonquin so far. It's, it's quite amazing. It is quite amazing. I'm sorry for the wind. My microphone is uh, it's not in top shape. <laughs> I don't know which portage did, uh, <laughs> did hurt it, but uh, yeah, it's not top shape, but hopefully it, it doesn't sound too bad. I don't know what, what I'm having for dinner tonight, guys. I got options. Either I'm doing a spaghetti or I'm doing a homemade uh, dry food that I've done at home. A, it's basically mashed potatoes, uh, Parmesan noodles, Uncle Ben rice with a little bit of tuna. It, it sounds weird, but I'm telling you, it's freaking great. <laughs> and it's dirt cheap. It's like six bucks for a meal, a dehydrated meal, and it's super good, and it got, it's got everything I need. There's some dehydrated uh, veggies in there too, don't you worry, don't you worry. I don't understand, guys, it's, it's freaking the first week of June, and right now, there is no mosquitoes. It's about like 18 or 20 degrees Celsius, just no mosquitoes. I know we're on an island, but damn, it feels good. It feels really good. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, re I'm really grateful. Grateful that, that my family lets, let me do this, go away for five days like that on an expedition. Grateful that I have three awesome partners with me on this trip. Four. Let's not forget Rusty, who's amazing. I'm learning a lot. Those guys have a lot of knowledge and, and resilience, and they, and they love to share that knowledge. So I'm learning, I'm learning a lot on this trip, and that's great. That's really great. Marty from Par Extreme, awesome as ever. Mart, who's a guide. Man, that dude, he's Jack. <laughs> Was a guide in the Yalgonquin Park, was a guide uh, in the Cayman Island. Uh, he's going to be probably a guide in Spain, like a sea kayak guide. He's, just, he's got a ton of knowledge, it's so great. And Dave is an engineer, so he's, he comes up with epic ideas on how to do stuff around here. So I'm, honestly, I'm learning, I'm learning a lot, and I'm grateful for it. Grateful for the weather. Which is great. We were supposed to have rain, like a, a day or two, a big storm and a day of rain, and, and none of that happened. So yeah, first trip post COVID, and it's so far one of the best one ever, for the exception <laughs> that we're not get, getting any fish. But I mean, that's just because I'm here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man.
That was, a, that was a sweet morning, eh? So we just backed up camp. Sad that we see, we didn't see any, uh, any life this morning, but birds, but hey, that's just, that's just part of the game. Sometimes you, sometimes you get some moose, sometimes you don't. So, we're gonna have a couple of portages to do today, small one, mostly. We're gonna go down a little creek. That's gonna be neat, that's gonna be a change of view from, uh, from all those lakes. Even though we got lucky, pretty, pretty epic lakes that we did. Just by their beauty. I think it's maybe the second time I've done a multi-day trip like this is our fifth day, right? And no rain. How awesome is that, guys? No rain. So we got about five hours, five to six hours of, uh, of traveling to do today before we get to the car. But I think it's gonna be like, uh, Honestly, an easy day overall. I kind of don't want to go. <laughs> Felt so good to be here all alone too. I thought for some reason that the, the park would be like full of people just because everyone wants to get out. And it's like the first time it's open for, for uh, camping. But hey, I guess people are scared of a uh, of mosquitoes and black fly. I think Algonquin is home of all of them, basically. It's like a, it's like the motherland. Man, this morning, Rusty, <laughs> we went for a silent paddle <laughs> and we left the dog on the island just because we were scared he would bark at anything that would move, and the dog was like, no, you guys aren't, aren't leaving without me, just freaking jumped in the water. 
and start swimming to catch us up. We had like, we turned over so to put him back in, a, in one of the canoes, but man, you wanna see loyalty? This dog was not gonna leave without us. He wasn't gonna stay and watch us go. No, 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 sir. Part of the crew, Rusty. Yeah, yeah. Feels pretty good. My uh, my cramp in my right calf is is gone. I had that for like 12 hours yesterday, so I'm, I'm glad it's gone. A lot of stretching helped, and uh, it's good to feel the muscles getting back in game shape a little bit. So next trip is gonna be hopefully a bit easier. It's gonna be much different, but. It's gonna be nice, real nice. Anyway. Oh, that was a tough one, people. Woo. Okay, okay. That creek is no joke. That was way more technical than anticipated. There's a ton of bugs. Whoa, and I think I under, underestimated my level of uh, fatigue. Holy crap. I got a drink around your own butt. Okay. I got a drink after you, bud, but whoo! That was for man for show. Oh, la, 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 la. Okay. It's the first time, I believe, that I asked for an oil stop in the portage and it wasn't even the biggest one it was like half our biggest one i'm just like nope lesson learned use the one and a half method so much easier take the extra 20 minutes and do it like that <laughs> so you can send it all the way after lesson learned put your ego aside people less and learned this is a nice little creek though it's quite gorgeous i feel like we could do a movie here you know like they were in the jungle home of all the black flies in the entire world <laughs> ah man i brought a bug shelter i just can't wear it it's too warm too warm if i'm active so I'd rather just cover myself up and uh, and fight them with my eyes, my death stare. It's feel, it feels good. We're about what a third done, portage-wise. I think we got an extra four portage to do. We've just done uh, two. Using my rafting technique that Marty behind me fought me a year ago, I believe. Oh la la, people. I love how the scene is different on every lake and every creek. You just don't get tired of it. Nature finds a way to be beautiful no matter what, eh? Loving it. My only complaint is, where are the fishes? So my battery's dead. I'm using a Marty's phone right now. It's a gentleman. This was hard, much harder than we expected. Very technical, very, very technical, but what a nice little fall over there. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to talk to you again, guys. 
but we we're about halfway done in our uh, traveling time. This was a big one, eh, Marty? Yeah, that was a that was an easy. Route. That was an easy, but Marty's beast. Easy route out. <laughs> <laughs> but then Marty's a beast. He's a beast, giving me the power to continue Mark on. So yeah. Me. But Mark broke me. <laughs> Mark. <Lasted> me. <laughs> this guy is the real captain. No Even he's got the look of a captain with the little stash there, eh? It's ah, awesome. Love you, buddy. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So we just finished a huge ass uh, line of portages, Maple Creek to Maple Creek. Now we are back on Kayas, the original lake we started from. There is civilization. We've met uh, one guy that just started this trip and now there's a freaking motorboat in front of us. In front of us, so first time I see this in a while. Uh, for some of this trip anyway, so That was pretty pretty epic. I think I got lucky. I think I got lucky to do this trip with my buddy Mart from Par Extreme. Go check out his challenge challenge <laughs> channel Par Extreme. There's gonna be a link in the description That guy is my partner in life for camping. He's a beast. Also big shout out to Mart Who's actually a, a next um, guide in the Algonquin Park. So I got to learn a lot, man. That guy, that guy knows, knows his stuff big time, big time. And he's a beast, so. That's yeah. pretty great. Good, yeah. yeah, and uh, big thanks to Dave. Uh, not really, just a couple. <sighs> big thanks to Dave too, and to Rusty, our mascot, who's just like the best dog ever for camping. So anyway, guys, I'm really thankful I got to do this trip with them and and I'll see you on the next one. And if you like those kind of trips, tell me in the comment section. Okay. <laughs> Actually, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification. That helps helps the channel big time. Big, big time. And I'm glad you, you stick to the end if you did, because that was a long one, I know. I know, but it was a five-day trip. All right. All right. For real. See ya.